quick aside, remember, the PDF is not <coughs> each one is not a the function itself does not say the probability of each point. If you saw that, then for example, if you look at mun over b minus a, or well, let's see, b minus a, wait, a to b, and each one has probability one over b minus a. In this set of points, there are infinitely many points, and you keep on summing them. It's going to be greater than one. That is not good. Not good at all. So, never think of a probability distribution function as having probability at each and separate point. When we compute the probability, we take the integral, we take the area. Now, in a real number line, we only look at intervals. But in spaces, for example, that looks like, for example, a blob like this, spaces of all probability, we partition, we take a blob here, and we integrate over this blob. Very important point. This actually leads into the theory of indicator functions, which we will not be talking about today, right? Okay, we do not need to talk about indicator functions, because Christian says so. <laughs> but what we do need to talk about before we head into the joint leads, the joint probabilities. So, is first we have to talk about cumulative probability. Very important. Now, if we look into this discrete function, let's say it looks like this, and the sum of this is going to have to be equal to 1. And remember, all those distribution, all it is is just popular models. You only need to be, uh, for, to be, you have to just have to fulfill a few things. Be discrete, you have to be discrete. You have to be probability between 0 and 1, and the sum of them has to equal to 1, and it all have to be destroyed, all the, and it all have to have all the possibilities. Same thing for continuous, except it has to be continuous. And each point does not have to be probable. Just have to sum up to one. <coughs> so, understand that. If you understand the concepts, you understand life. You don't have to memorize anything in life. You just have to understand it. Unless you're fuzzy, in which case I'm very sorry. <laughs> anyway. So, there's something called cumulative, dis cumulative distribution function which is itself, it's not this new probability. However, it tells you what the probability of an outcome being less than or equal to, well actually, is it less than or less than? Less than or equal to, but left-sided. Okay, let's, let's just say that. Actually, I'll, yes, yes, yes. Okay, don't worry, I can define it my own way. If, if they don't like my definition, screw them. My definition's better. So, let's see, let's say this function is, let's say we can show this by p of x. This is p of x when x equals to 1, x equals to 2, dot, 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 dot. Well, actually, let's say only equal to 4. x equals to 4. Cumulative distribution function is the probability that x is less than or equal to k. So if you saw, so, so the corresponding probability distribution function, wait, no, I mean cumulative distribution function, for this probability mass function, will look like this. It's strictly increasing. And at the end, the sum will be 1. So if we saw a uniform distribution function, but also notice here, in that case, the cumulative distribution function, or cumulative mass function, it was discontinuous. <laughs> However, remember when we perform integration on a continuous function, it itself is continuous. Wait, is that right? Yeah, that looks right. If it wasn't this, it wasn't discontinuous, then we have the contradiction. So, mm. anyway, but then, uh, but then again, because you know some of the most trivial statements in mathematics that are intuitively trivial, you have to prove. Some remember picture never proof. You have to prove it rigorously. So, for example, uniform distribution. Go from A to B. When you integrate, you're gonna say whatever the function, whatever the probability 
is less than, let's say, k. So probably, so whenever, or let's say not probability, but whenever the function is less than k. This is the, this is the function. <laughs> Remember, k is between 0 and 1. This is, can be seen as in, whenever the integral from a to b of 1 over b minus a is less than k. So this would actually look like when you're here, everything is going to be less than or equal to 1. And when you're here, everything's going to be, there's none, none, impossible. It's 0. You can think about this, the cumulative distribution function of this, as triangular. And there's actually a very nice way to prove this. But you can actually sh show this. You actually just integrate straight through and show it. Oh, uh, yeah. So, cumulative, distrib cumulative distribution function. So, you're given a space A. It's the problem, it's the set of A such that it's less than some K. So, yeah. So, we're going to talk about jointly distributed random variables now. So, before we said probability that function x is less than y. <coughs> and this is f of y. This is the cumulative distribution with respect to y. Remember, x is a random variable, y, fixed number. So. So if you saw this as disjoint, as you saw this, now we can make this a little bit more complicated. Let's say it was with respect to two variables. So we have two random variables. Clipping, uh, tossing a hat, wait, no. <laughs> um, clipping a mahjong tile, like before, with dagger and flower. And also waiting for the bus stop. Let's say x, mahjong. Why? Um, bus arrival. Now I can say joint distribution is the probability that f <coughs> x is less than y. x is less than, um, let's say, let's say x tilde, y tilde. x is less than x tilde, comma y is less than y tilde. Now, there's a big point here with jointly, with, this is called jointly distributed random variables. And this is the cumulative function of both. Remember, when you sum up all, over all probabilities, possibilities, this guy should equal to one. But remember, this guy does not need to be continuous. This guy need not, make con this, this guy need not be continuous. This guy need not be discrete. So, something that we should know also, that these function, that these two random variables they could either be disjoint or not disjoint. If they are disjoint, then everything becomes, then life becomes easy. Very easy. But if they are together, that is, that is difficult. Well, it becomes more difficult. So if it becomes disjoint, there's a very nice theorem that says that, <coughs> well, by the way, we look at it this way as a cumulative distribution function, because sometimes in life, it's easier to look at things the other, another way. If we looked at this, if we take the derivative of this, it would be so ugly. But we could actually, actually common-wise, we, we do that sometimes. Actually, do you do this in this chapter? Do you look at the cumulative, do you look at the um, probability density function of two random variables without looking at the cumulative distribution function? Because you can actually do, you can actually derive. But actually, in the beginning of this, you use this way first. Yeah, you do. You do look at the joint density. So, for example, okay. So, for example, you do look at just not capital F, but f of x comma y is equal to, for example, e to negative x plus y, and this is for x equal to zero. From zero less than x less than infinity, zero less than y less than infinity. And you can say that if you inter if you double integrate this guy.
same with infinity as of x comma y, dx of dy. This is actually going to equal to 1. And you can see that, because you can actually pull out the e of minus y, integrate it first, that will be equal to 1, and then integrate that, and that will be equal to 1. Very simple. <laughs> mm.